In this video, I'll share the highlights from our recent Western Caribbean cruise on the Norwegian getaway. Sit back and get comfortable. This is going to be a long video because there is a lot to love about this ship. This vacation certainly got off to a great start with a flight aboard my favorite type of airplane, a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. We fly a lot these days for all these vacations we go on, and flying in a Dreamliner is hugely better than flying in any other kind of airplane. They've got a great seatback entertainment system and a nice in-flight map system, too. No shades to pull down over the windows. You just push a button to darken the glass. And the most impressive part is the gigantic seats in first class. And the way you can just push a button and recline them if you want to stretch out for a little nap. We had an amazing view of the Sierra Nevada mountains as we flew out of California, and eventually we ended up in Miami, Florida. This was a couple of weeks before Christmas, so they had a gigantic tree set up. Now, when we cruise out of Miami, we like to stay at the Holiday Inn because it's very close to the port of Miami, and I love looking out at the cruise ships right from our hotel window. The other big thing the Holiday Inn has going for it is that it's right across the street from the Bayside Mall, which is full of great bars and restaurants. Check out this gigantic plate of fajitas that Kellen and I shared for dinner. It was delicious, but there was no way that we could finish all that. We needed a third person with us. The top-tier restaurants are mostly located on the ground floor of Bayside. If you're on a budget and you need to eat on the cheap, head up to the second floor where there's something like a food court up there with your bargained price dining options. They'll even offer you free samples to entice you to dine there. So, the Holiday Inn at the Port of Miami is the hotel I recommend if you're sailing from Miami. Not only do you have the Bayside Mall right across the street for shopping and dining, but there's also a CVS pharmacy just a block away. Super convenient if you realize you forgot to pack something for the cruise. I buy mouthwash here rather than risk leaving it inside my suitcase during a flight. The next day, we took a lift over to the port of Miami to board the Norwegian getaway. And of course, it's always a bit of a zoo outside the cruise terminal and inside, too. But we were completely unaffected by it because for this cruise, we are staying in the Haven, which meant we got to bypass all the lines and have a VIP boarding experience. The boarding process is one of many things I love about the Haven on NCL. They lead you through the terminal, bypassing all the lines, and walk you directly onto the ship. Sail away from the Port of Miami was quite spectacular. We were right behind a lure of the seas as both our ship and theirs headed out to sea together. I got a pretty spectacular time-lapse video of it from our vantage point on the Haven sun deck at the front of the ship. I'm putting a link in the corner of the screen now if you want to watch the Sail Away time-lapse video in its entirety. This was a seven-day Western Caribbean itinerary. We had very gray skies as the ship headed south. Our first stop was the island of Roatan, part of the country of Honduras. The big surprise for me as we looked out at Roatan from our balcony was to see something hilarious that I've never seen before. People trying to walk on water inside giant hamster balls. I laughed so hard watching these girls fall down time after time after time. I've seen people inside giant hamster balls before, but never on water. It was so funny to watch. There's a link up in the corner of the screen if you want to watch an extended video of the girls in the giant hamster balls. 
We had planned to go to the beach in Roatan, but the weather didn't cooperate, so we canceled that and had a spa day instead. One of the best things about the Norwegian getaway is the fantastic thermal suite within the spa. And because we are staying in a spa suite, we had full access at no additional charge. I love that NCL keeps the big indoor pool in the thermal suite the same temperature as a jacuzzi. Not all cruise ships do that. In Scandinavian culture, they like to go from hot to cold, so they keep the jacuzzis hot and the big pool quite a bit cooler on cruise ships that adhere to the Scandinavian style. With a name like Norwegian, it's kind of ironic that this cruise line follows American preferences and keeps the water in the big indoor pool in the thermal suite quite warm. But I love it, and it's one of many things that keeps me coming back to NCL. Our second port of call was one I had been looking forward to for a long time, NCL's private island in Belize, known as Harvest Key. This was my first visit to Harvest Key, and I was very impressed. Unfortunately, the weather didn't really cooperate, so it wasn't a great day to hang out at the beach, but let me give you a look around. There's a long pier that leads from the deep water channel where the cruise ship docks and takes you ashore to the island. If you have mobility issues, you're welcome to hitch a ride ashore. Otherwise, walk and enjoy the views of the ship and of the mangroves. I got a kick out of watching these pelicans fishing. There must have been a lot of fish in the water because these pelicans were having no trouble finding lunch here. On the island itself, there is a spectacular beach. I would have loved to hung out there all day long and do some swimming in the water, but it just wasn't the right weather for that. I'll be back on another cruise in the spring, and I'm hoping for better weather. The thing that really impressed me was how many loungers there are on the island. They could bring their biggest ship here. Every passenger could come ashore and want a lounger, and I'm sure there would still be enough. There were loungers everywhere. Besides that beautiful beach, there's a gigantic swimming pool, and I really do mean gigantic. I bet on a hot day in the Caribbean, it's amazing to see it full of people. Next to the pool, you'll find a great lunch venue, Jimmy Buffett's Landshark Bar and Grill, and speaking of dining and drinking on the island, just be aware that even though NCL owns the island, as far as the passengers are concerned, it's just like visiting any other port of call insofar as paying for food and drink goes. The food and drinks on the island are not covered by your dining and drinking packages, so bring cash or credit cards to pay for food and drink, just like you would in any port of call. While I was on the island, I got a big kick out of watching people on the zip lines. They have a very extensive network of zip lines zigzagging around the island, and it was a lot of fun to watch people fly overhead. There are also several aviaries on the island. They've got macaws and toucans and a pretty impressive butterfly habitat. Our third port of call was another one I had never been to before, and I was so pleasantly surprised here. It's the port of Costa Maya in Mexico. Thankfully, we finally escaped the bad weather and we got some sun. They have a very cool-looking water park in Costa Maya, and if you visit here with kids, it should probably be your destination. But since this was my first time in Costa Maya, I wanted to just explore what they offered right near the pier. I was very impressed. There's a big swimming pool, nowhere near as big as Harvest Key, but big enough. And all we had to do to snag a lounger right next to the pool was buy one drink from the bar. So we enjoyed drinks poolside and hung out enjoying the warm weather for a while. When we finally had enough of the pool, we took a walk around to see what else they had right there around the pool. Lots of shopping, of course, bars and restaurants, and this was interesting, a swim with the dolphins attraction. But the thing at Costa Maya that delighted Kellen and I the most was a total surprise. We had no idea that they had this here. 
When we were at the pool, we heard birds up above us, and looking up, we noticed all these little suspended bridges linking a series of aviaries up above the pool area. It cost $12 per person for entry, but for us, it was totally worth it. We love tropical birds, especially macaws, and they had some very well-behaved macaws, as well as many other birds, and Kellen had a whole bunch of fun feeding them. In one of the aviaries, they had a certain kind of bird. I don't know what kind it was exactly, but these birds totally loved my hat. The minute I walked in, I had birds flying in to sit on my hat. It was hilarious. And now I can say that Jim Zim is the bird whisperer. So we had a lot of fun in Costa Maya, and I'm looking forward to coming back again in the spring. Docked right next to our ship in Costa Maya was a brand new cruise ship that's getting a lot of buzz these days. It's the Celebrity Edge, and you can easily identify her from quite a distance because of that very unusual orange structure on the side of the ship. It's called the Magic Carpet. It's basically a platform on the side of the ship that can be moved up or down to one of several decks as needed. You don't ride it like an elevator, but you just find it stationed at different decks throughout the day. I chatted up several different people on the pier that I saw were passengers on the Celebrity Edge, and they had really good things to say about it. Our final port of call was Cozumel, Mexico. We were docked next to the MSC Armonia. Don't get me started about MSC. I I've been on 45 cruises now, and they've all been good, but the least good one was on MSC. It's a cruise line for Europeans. I don't recommend it for Americans, so I'm pretty sure I won't be sailing with MSC again. Right across the street from the cruise ship pier is a big shopping mall. Normally, I would spend a day in Cozumel at the beach, but Kellen and I just weren't up for a big adventure today. We were craving American-style Mexican food. <laughs> you know, not real Mexican food, but what Americans think Mexican food is. So we headed over to Senior Frog's Restaurant, which is always fun, especially watching the tourists cut loose and get a little crazy. Back on board the ship, Norwegian Getaway has several very fun water slides, including two where you stand inside a tube and the floor suddenly drops out from under you. Three, two, one. The entire success of my YouTube channel started with cruise ship water slide videos. My channel has had over 228 million views, and 112 million of those have been from cruise ship water slide videos. So, since I was on a ship with really great water slides, I set out to create a really great new water slide video. There's a link up in the corner if you'd like to see what I came up with. Specialty dining is another one of my favorite things about NCL. We had some really great dinners during our cruise. They keep the restaurants dark to create a romantic dining mood, and that makes it tough to shoot video. So let me show you some still photos of some of our dinners. Here's the New York strip steak that I had at Cagney's, the steakhouse, and Kellen had the grilled salmon. This is pork chops from the Italian restaurant. The last time I was there, I had the lasagna, and it was horrible. I laughed when I noticed that it wasn't even on the menu this time. The Brazilian Steakhouse has a pretty great salad bar, but don't fill up on it. You'll want to save lots of room for all the meat that they bring around and carve off slices right there at your table. I've warmed up to the private restaurant in The Haven, as I've cruised with NCL more often now. Honestly, I felt a bit uncomfortable there my first couple of Haven cruises. I'm a casual guy, and somehow The Haven restaurant seemed overly fancy to me at first, but I've come to realize that you can be as casual and comfortable in The Haven restaurant as you want. They just want you to be happy, and they want to spoil you. So I had a lot more meals in the Haven restaurant this time around than in my earlier cruises. The breakfast in the Haven restaurant is fantastic. I ate all seven breakfasts there. 
I like to ask them to warm up the croissants for me. I like them better that way than just at room temperature, and they are totally happy to accommodate that special request. At lunch, the French dip sandwich was a nice surprise. I had it a couple of years ago during a previous cruise on Norwegian Getaway. I remember thinking at that time they didn't know how to make a proper French dip. I think they sliced the meat too thick or something, but they must have figured it out since then. This time, the French dip was fantastic. So good that I actually went back for lunch on another day and had another one. And here's the prime rib from the Haven restaurant. I made a mistake and I ordered it well done. I shouldn't have done that. My mistake. It probably would have been great if I hadn't done that. At lunch, if you're in the mood for a burger, the Haven's Burger is definitely the best burger of all the restaurants on board, even better than the Cheeseburger in Paradise at the Margaritaville restaurant on board Norwegian Getaway. Speaking of Margaritaville, you absolutely must try the Volcano Nachos there. But it helps if you have three or four people at your table to team up on it. It is big. We did actually eat in the buffet one night. We love Mexican food, so we were excited about Mexican night at the buffet, but it was a disappointment. We stopped by on seafood night in the buffet, too, just to shoot this little video clip. We didn't actually eat any, but it looked good. One last thing on the subject of food. If you need a little snack in the middle of the afternoon before dinner, or maybe a little dessert after dinner, this is a great little place that serves gelato on deck eight for a small extra charge. Our stateroom on the Norwegian getaway was pretty darned great. It's what's known as a Haven Spa Suite. The very unusual thing about it is that there's a Whirlpool tub right next to the bed. Between that private tub big enough for two people to share and the big shower in the bathroom, this is the perfect cabin for honeymooners or any romantic couple. Kellen and I will be celebrating our 38th wedding anniversary pretty soon, so you don't have to be an actual honeymooner to enjoy this suite, but if the spark is still alive, it's a great suite. There's a link up in the corner to a more extensive tour of the Haven Spa Suite. The main reason we chose a Haven Spa Suite is that it comes with not only full access to the thermal suite inside the spa, but also all the benefits of being part of the Haven, such as access to the Haven Courtyard, the outdoor dining area, the private restaurant, the private bar, and the private sun deck, and the full services of both a butler and a concierge. This was my fourth time cruising in the Haven on one of NCL's ships, and I totally love it. Pricey, for sure, but if your financial situation will allow for it, it's an amazingly great way to cruise. We are platinum in NCL's loyalty program now, and there are some nice perks that come with that. I'm not going to list all the perks, but one of them is a free dinner for two at the steakhouse, and another is a free dinner for two at the Italian restaurant. But here's the perk that I actually got the biggest kick out of. We got a free tour of some of the crew-only areas of the ship. They call it the behind-the-scenes tour. It was really interesting to go below the waterline and tour the laundry facility and to look at how they deal with the huge volume of towels and sheets and tablecloths that they have to wash, dry, and fold. The machinery was quite interesting to see in action. Without it, there's no way they could deal with this amount of laundry. But even though they do have some pretty nice machines that do a lot of the work, it seems like a bit of a nightmare job in very warm, humid conditions. Imagine how bad the situation in your home country would have to be for this to seem like your best life option. I am certainly fortunate to be a passenger not doing one of these jobs, but I can also see how there's a camaraderie among the crew below decks. And I certainly understand that You've got to do what you've got to do to support your family. 
I was a used car salesman for a while, 25 years ago. That wasn't great, but it was certainly easier than working in the laundry would be. The next stop on our behind-the-scenes tour was the walk-in freezer. These visuals don't really give you much of a clue about how cold this was. The fact that our tour guide was wearing a skirt doesn't help to convey a sense of the cold in here. Trust me, it's a freezer. It was cold. The logistics of acquiring and storing all the food for a mega cruise ship just amaze me. Then we visited one of the kitchens, another amazing site that's kind of hard to wrap your head around. Of course, we visited between breakfast and lunch, so it was quite a bit more calm in the kitchen than it would be at peak dining times. But it was really interesting to look around and get a bit of a glimpse into the logistics involved. By the way, the kitchen is one floor below the main restaurant. Do you know how the waiters get up one level to bring the trays of food from the kitchen to your table? Well, it turns out that the waiters have access to something that the passengers don't. A crew-only escalator. How about that? I had read about it, but it was fun to see it in person on the behind-the-scenes tour. One last thing before I wrap this up. I'm going to do something that I rarely do. I'm going to say something nice about MSC Seaside. I mentioned earlier that MSC Seaside was our least favorite out of all 45 cruises we've been on, but let me show you something they got right on the MSC Seaside that isn't quite right on Norwegian Getaway. This is what's known as the waterfront on Norwegian Getaway. It's an outdoor deck that runs around the exterior of Deck 8, kind of like the promenade deck on Carnival or Princess ships. But it's better than a promenade deck because in addition to just having lots of comfortable places to sit and enjoy the views, there are also a number of outdoor bars where you can sit and have a drink, as well as outdoor seating for many of the specialty restaurants. So on a warm night in the Caribbean, it's a great place to have a meal. But where they got it wrong on the Norwegian getaway is they failed to extend the deck out far enough to cover the lifeboats and keep them out of sight. So when you're sitting on the waterfront, the views are marred a bit by the sight of the bright orange lifeboats. Now take a look at MSC Seaside and see how they should have done it on Norwegian getaway. This is MSC's version. They call it the waterfront boardwalk. The deck extends out much further than it does on Norwegian Getaway, and it totally blocks any view of the lifeboats. If we look up at it from down below, from this angle, you can see the lifeboats on MSC Seaside, and if you look carefully, you can see the deck extended out right above them. But as you walk down the waterfront boardwalk on MSC Seaside, the deck is very wide, and the lifeboats are hidden out of view. And I find it interesting that Norwegian did get it right on their newest generation of ships. Here's the waterfront on the Norwegian Bliss. Notice that it's quite a bit wider than the waterfront on Norwegian Getaway, and the lifeboats are tucked completely out of view just below the deck. Before I go, I want to just mention that there are a lot of advantages to using a travel agent to book a cruise rather than booking it yourself directly with the cruise line, especially if you're new to cruising and you don't understand all the options and how it all works, and you want to make sure that you don't make any of the rookie mistakes that can ruin a cruise. It's hard to know who the good travel agents are, the ones that really know what they're doing. Let me make it easy for you and make my travel agent available to you. She's really easy to work with. She knows what she's doing. Her name is Caitlin Gallagher, and you see her contact information on the screen there. Pause the video if you need to, to jot it down, and let Caitlin help you book your next cruise at absolutely no additional charge to you. She's paid a commission by the cruise lines, but she works for you. It's the smart way to book a cruise. I'm Jim Zim. Thanks for sticking with me through a very long video about all the great things about the Norwegian getaway and one thing that they improved with their next generation of ships. 
If you stuck with the video for this long, I guess you must have liked it, so please hit the thumbs up button and let YouTube know that this is a good video that they should recommend to other people interested in cruising. And if you're in the mood for another video, here are links to a few I think you'd like.